Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of infective endocarditis of the mitral valve. So we are looking at three pieces of the mitral valve. There's one piece here, another piece here, and another piece here. Let's take a look at the middle piece. And this is actually part of the valve itself, which is usually composed of pink collagen bundles. We also have some looser areas which may be a little bit more bluish, and these are composed of extracellular matrix material. So looking at this area within the valve, we can see that there is this bluish area, and when we zoom in here, we can actually appreciate that there are numerous neutrophils here with the multi-lobed nuclei. So there's lots of acute inflammation, and there's also a lot of this granular pinkish necrotic debris in the background. So we have a focus of acute inflammation with necrosis within the valve itself. And if we look at the surface of the valve here and here, we can see some pink and blue deposits. This is actually seen better in this other piece here where we can see this whole area of this pink and blue deposits on the surface. And these are actually vegetations. So on high magnification, these vegetations actually comprise fibrin or fibrin, which is the strandy pink material. And all these coarse granular bluish deposits are actually bacterial organisms. So these are clumps of bacterial organisms. And if the case was a little bit more fresh, we can also see usually a lot of neutrophils. Let's have a look at another example. In this other example, we are also looking at a vegetation here with this pink fibrinous material and blue clumps of bacteria. And on higher magnification, again, we can see these clumps of bacteria. There are some very degenerate neutrophils here as well. Going back to the original picture, we can also see that in this particular piece, there is something different going on here. And these are actually areas of calcification. This is quite difficult to cut as a thin microscopic section. So sometimes we see that this fracturing artifact is here. And this is one of the long-term outcomes of infective endocarditis, where there's damage and scarring of the valve itself, which can lead to calcifications. And of course, this leads to abnormal function of the valve. Let's take a closer look at infective endocarditis. This is defined as infection of the cardiac valves, as well as sometimes the mural endocardium, giving rise to vegetations. So vegetations, as we saw earlier, these are usually large, larger than in other conditions such as autoimmune disease. They are comprised of fibrin, inflammatory cells, as well as microorganisms, which can be bacteria most frequently, sometimes other types of organisms such as fungal organisms as well. What causes this is the seeding of these organisms into the bloodstream, and this can be secondary to dental or surgical procedures. Hence, in patients who have underlying risk factors for developing infective endocarditis, sometimes prophylactic antibiotics are useful. There may be also mucosal breaks or breaks in the skin, and also intravenous drug abusers are at higher risk. There are two main types of infective endocarditis, acute and subacute infective endocarditis. Now, these are not very clear cut. We don't always get cases falling into one or the other extreme. Sometimes there can be mixed features. In acute IE, the valves are usually normal and the organisms are virulent, such as Staph aureus. This is clinically very serious. Patients are usually very ill with high fever, and if not treated, can have significant morbidity and even mortality. Subacute IE usually occurs on the background of abnormal valves. So these are the patients who are at risk. Abnormal valves include perhaps congenital abnormalities, such as a bicuspid aortic valve or maybe prosthetic valves. The organisms are usually less virulent. So what are some complications of infective endocarditis? Well, these vegetations can actually shoot off into the bloodstream and land in distant sites such as the brain or the spleen, 
And because they carry organisms, this can give rise to septic infarcts. There may be a valve ring abscess if the infection penetrates the valve, as we saw earlier in the microscopic slide. There may eventually be valve damage, regurgitation and stenosis. And also there may be septicemia, and if the conduction system is involved, there may also be arrhythmias. Hence, in summary, infective endocarditis is an infection of the heart valves and sometimes the mural endocardium. This gives rise to large vegetations on the surface of the valves, which comprise fibrin, bacterial organisms, as well as inflammatory cells. And one of the complications that we see here are also infection of the valve substance itself, giving rise to valvular dysfunction as well as eventually fibrosis scarring calcification, which can also give rise to valvular stenosis or regurgitation. Thank you.